The Emperors Rome was not always ruled by emperors. For nearly 500 years, Rome was a republic ruled by an elected group called the Senate. But the republic collapsed in the chaos of civil wars both before and after Julius Caesar's death. In 27 BCE, Caesar's adopted son, Octavian, later called Augustus, reformed the state and brought back peace to the Roman world. He became the first emperor of Rome, and when he died in 14 CE, he passed the new throne to his adopted son, Tiberius. Rome was to be ruled by emperors for the next 400 years. Heads and Tails Coins were a good way to display the image of the emperor and his deeds. These are coins of Tiberius's successors. Nero was the last of Augustus's family, reigned 54 to 68 CE. Claudius conquered Britain, reigned 41 to 54 CE. Caligula went mad and was murdered, reigned 37 to 41 CE. A Roman Triumph When an emperor won a great victory, he would be granted a parade called a triumph. This gave him the right to lead his soldiers and prisoners through Rome while the people cheered. Mad Emperor Some emperors went mad with power. Many Romans blamed Nero for starting the Great Fire of Rome in 64 CE so that he could build himself a new capital in its ruins. The color of power. Purple, the most expensive dye, was largely reserved for the emperor's clothes. Senators wore togas with a purple band. Purple dye came from Murex seashells. Emperor's weapon. This spectacular scabbard depicts Emperor Tiberius. It was found in the River Rhine in Germany. Tiberius receiving his nephew, the General Germanicus. Laurel for a crown. Roman emperors did not wear gold crowns because they did not want to be thought of as kings, but they often wore laurel wreaths to symbolize their success in military power, particularly after a conquest. The jeweled crown was added much later. Cameo of a god. The carved gem above shows the emperor Augustus. He was proclaimed a god when he died. Julia and Livia. Here, Augustus's wife, Livia, is shown as the goddess Juno and his daughter Julia as the helmeted goddess Roma. Livia was married to Augustus for 53 years and had considerable influence over him. Drusilla. This stone portrait depicts one of the younger women in Augustus's family, probably Drusilla, heir to the throne. Often the emperor adopted a promising young man to succeed him when he died. Emperor Antoninos Pius adopted Lucius Veros, shown here in this fine bronze bust. Portrait of Emperor Tiberius. Traces of wood from the scabbard are stuck to the steel blade. Allegiance eagle standard in a shrine. Life of a soldier. The army played an important role in Roman society. Many poor people joined the army because it offered a good standard of living and the chance to learn a skill or trade. Soldiers were rewarded at the end of their military service. Retired legionaries were given grants of land or money, and auxiliary soldiers were granted Roman citizenship. Settlements grew up around the army camps, some of which developed into cities, such as York in England. Many soldiers serving in the provinces married local women, which helped to spread Roman culture and traditions across the empire. Parade Mask In peacetime, soldiers spent a lot of time training. Cavalrymen often wore elaborate armor for parades. This bronze mask is from a helmet probably made for mock cavalry battles. Clay Plaque Soldiers made their own materials, like this clay plaque for a roof. It shows the name and emblem of the 20th legion, a charging boar. Hadrian's Wall. At Emperor Hadrian's command, the army built a great stone wall to protect Britain from the Caledonian tribes of Scotland. Legionaries built the wall and the auxiliaries guarded it. The wall ran for 75 miles, or 120 kilometers. A fanciful view of a legionary, complete with shield and sphere. Tombstone. This broken tombstone belonged to the daughter of a Roman standard bearer stationed in Lancashire, England. Elaborate hairstyle on mask. Bronze document. When auxiliaries in the provinces completed 25 years of service, they were usually granted Roman citizenship. To prove their new status, some soldiers had bronze copies of the official document made, like this one from Cheshire in England. The emperor's image and titles. The lid is on the inside. Purse. Soldiers carried cash in leather or bronze purses like this one on the left. Worn like a bracelet, it could only be opened when it was taken off, so it was hard to rob. Forgotten Hoard These gold pieces, more than four years' pay for a legionary, were buried in Kent, England, just after the Romans invaded Britain. Master Builders The Romans were skilled builders constructing temples, country houses, and magnificent public buildings from stone, brick, and marble. 
They made great use of arches and even invented the dome. The Romans also had sound engineering skills. They built aqueducts to deliver water supplies to cities and constructed roads and bridges that are still in use today. Pont du Gard, France. This three-story stone bridge carried an aqueduct that ran for about 30 miles or 50 kilometers. The water flowed through a covered channel along the top. Plumb bomb. A piece of string attached to a simple bronze weight gave a perfectly vertical line to make sure walls were straight. Bronze rule. This folding rule was easily carried on a belt or in a bag. It is one Roman foot long, or 11 and 5 eighths inches, 296 millimeters. Foot rule is divided into 12 Roman inches. Dividers are tightened with a wedge. Dividers. Engineers used dividers like these when working with scale planes and models. The gap between the lower points is always twice that between the upper points. Bronze square. Used for checking right angles, this tool would have been useful to masons, carpenters, and mosaic makers. A Roman road. Roads were usually very straight. They were built with a camber, or hump, so that rainwater drained into ditches. Roads were made up of several levels and were covered with gravel or stone slabs. Chisel. Romans used chisels like this iron one when they worked with wood. These tools were especially useful for making roof frames. Roman plumbing. Water supplies were very advanced in many Roman cities. The great aqueducts supplied a number of water outlets, especially public fountains, from which most people fetched their household water in buckets. Bathhouses had their own supplies, as did public toilets. Larger private houses often had running water, while also collecting rainwater from the roof. See the atrium on page 25. Elaborate systems of lead pipes fed the water to these buildings, and a system of underground sewers carried away the waste. Working pump. This reconstruction of a water pump shows how it worked. Two simple pumps were joined together. Each half had a piston, A, which when raised by the handle, B, sucked water into the cylinder, C, through a one-way valve, D. When the piston was pushed down, the water was forced into the outlet pipe, E, and out through another valve, F. The two cylinders acting in turn sent a jet of water out of the central pipe, G. Pompeii Fountain. Fountains worked by gravity. The statue depicts a boy holding a goose and the weight of the water in a hidden tank forced the jet out of the goose's mouth. Multi-seat toilet. A water channel under the seats carried away sewage. Valve. Preserved pump. Pumps like this well-preserved lead one were used to raise water to a higher level. The writer Vitruvius records that they were used to fill the tanks of public fountains like the one above left. The section has been cut away to reveal the outlet valves and to show the pipe joints. The valve cover allowed water to flow out, but shut when it tried to go the other way.